What is going on, everybody? Sorry about missing last week, but do not worry. Stratosphere Sports Betting is back. Uh, we are doing this episode a little earlier than our usual Friday uh, slot because we have a PGA championship. And if you ask me, there's nothing really more fun than betting on golf. You just tune in when you can. It's a really chill sport. And even if you pick the favorite, I mean, the winnings are insane. So I love some golf betting. So we definitely wanted to get it in. I know Tom's passionate, but we won't get into that just yet. Uh, real quick, I want to remind everybody, follow us, Stratosphere Sports Bets. Uh, that's on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. We started posting daily picks. I don't know if it's going to be an everyday thing. Uh, I will be going camping this weekend, so <laughs> we'll see if someone I'll, else. Gets I'll be those getting out. my picks out this weekend. I'll Tom's cover getting his picks week. out this week, so if you ever want to lose money, just tune into the. Now. <laughs> uh, we started yesterday with round one. We went two and one. That's not so bad. Um, I put two more out today. Uh, I parlayed them. I parlay. I parlayed your choices. Yeah. So maybe don't parlay the choices because not every single one's going to hit, but so long as you take all of them, I promise you will at least come out even because uh, I'm just that good. Um, so yeah, Stratosphere Sports Bets, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, because we, we need some love on these TikToks. We need some for you page action. We need to spread the word, start making everyone some serious bread. All right, Tom. I, I know you're excited for golf. Let's get into the PGA Championship this weekend. Um, so FanDuel, I'm not sure about every book out there. I doubt they're all consistent, but FanDuel at the very least has a top five finish option. Uh, first, I want to just talk about like two guys that we each think are locks to finish top five. I, um I mean, I'll kick it off with my first one. I love golf majors. I just, it's major events and golf are just really fun to bet on. They're exciting to watch. And I'm just, I'm really excited for the PGA Championship. And I'm going to kick it off with Patrick Cantlay at plus 500 to finish top five. Um, right when I saw it, it was something I just, I really liked. I don't know if he's going to end up winning it. If he does, it would be his first major win which would be, it would be great. And I do expect him to win a major at some point, but I'm not, I'm not ready to hedge my bets on a win. I do like him to finish top five. Um, at, at FedEx St. Jude Invitational, he started out struggling and it didn't look good, but he finished up the weekend going minus eight. So he's coming in off some good play. And I don't know, he grew up in California. He attended UCLA. Never heard. He should feel at home in San yeah. Francisco. <laughs> he should feel at home where in San Francisco, which is where the the championship is being played. And last year, PGA Championship, he finished tied for third. So I think a top five finish is, is very possible. And that plus 500, I really like that. All right. I just want to say real quick, I may have misrepresented the uh, segment here. Are these your locks or are these guys you like as value picks, like, by the odds, you you like um, their chances for top five. He's a guy that I love to finish top five. I okay. I'm not going to call it a lock, like, but I will say he's one of the, he's one of the players that I do. If I was predicting, ignoring odds, I probably would have him in my top five. Wow. Okay. So so a bit of a odds. Uh, definitely not the favorite in terms of odds, but you like him. That's good. That's always a. Good combo. Uh, I guess I'll give one. Um, and he, you might like him as well. It's a little soft of me. I know this is a betting show. People come here for some, some stuff they've never thought of. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the guy who's tied for uh, the favorite in terms of FanDuel's odds, at least, Justin Thomas. Um, I mean, like I said, uh, I'm definitely not the only one who's expecting a top five finish out of Thomas. He's been looking good. Um, it's just the way golf is, man. I, I don't want to sweat when I'm watching it. And in other sports, you pick the long shot because they've got some 
appeal. They've got some serious odds in their favor, but even in golf, like plus 220 to finish top five, uh, that's a solid ass payout. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking to watch. I'm looking to chill and watch one of the best currently in the game finish top five on a course that I like for his skill set. Um, so yeah, Justin yeah. Thomas. I'm going with JT as well. Yeah, he's you I, too. I actually do love this as a lock pick. Plus two twenty is is just it makes it it's icing on the cake. Um, <laughs> He, he won at FedEx by three strokes, which solidified himself as the number one current golfer in the world. And since we resumed golf in June, he's had four top 10 finishes. Like that, it's just, it's fantastic. He's been fantastic recently. I like him to finish top five for sure. All right. And then just following along with my trend, I got Brooks Kepka also plus 220. He is tied with Thomas as the favorite in terms of finishing top five, at least. Um, again, I feel bad, not really given an inside scoop here, but again, plus 220, I would consider both of them just about a lock to finish top five. Kepka would be the first to win three PGA championships in a row since like 1920, I think. I can just I can hear it on Sports Center now. Like I feel like that's the kind of thing that flashes up and unless I have money on it, I'm like, oh, I don't really care. But I feel like that's just the type of thing that's gonna happen. Brooks Kepka is gonna win and he's gonna turn twenty twenty around. But I, I think I've gotten ahead of ourselves of myself. <laughs> because our our next thing is the winner. And Brooks Kepka is my pick. <laughs> and the odds, man. I, I just love betting golf. Um, plus 1,100 to win. And, I mean, you, you can't go wrong. Throw $10, watch a little golf, kick back in your recliner and make 110 when the favorite wins. It just doesn't even make sense. But, you know, uh, it's a fun time. So, like I said, uh, I like him. I'm not trying to sweat. Uh, he's definitely got a good shot at it. It's a more expert course. And I think the the youth, the energy, and guys like, I still don't even know how to say it, DeChambeau. Uh, I, I just don't think that the that power is what the course requires. I've heard it's a harder course than years past. Uh, they've thinned it out a little bit. So yeah, I like I like the experience in Kepka. If I did have to give an inside scoop, I had to give a long shot. I would say Phil plus seven thousand. Like I, it's a it's a household name, and you make what? I should that should, this should be easy, Matt. Seven hundred on ten dollars. Yeah. Good <laughs> lord. Yeah. So yeah, if if. Anyone's going to be able to navigate the tighter course. I've heard they've made the rough even rougher, long grass. I, I mean, why not give it to Phil? So I'm picking um, what Brooks Kepka, but if I if that doesn't hit, making 700 off Phil is is an okay Sunday for me. Yeah, you can definitely throw a small bet on Phil and. Just in case he does pull it out, that would be pretty magical. That would be amazing. Yeah, I love Kepka as well. Um, he looked great at FedEx, and obviously he's won, he's won the PGA Championship two years in a row. But my, my pick's a little more interesting. Yeah. I'm going with the fan favorite, <laughs> my personal favorite golfer, Tiger Woods. And for me, when it comes to golf majors, you just you got to follow your heart. <laughs> yeah, go gut instinct. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the greatest of all time. And it's and that's not that's not on the only reason. Um I actually remember back in 2018, just two years ago, the PGA championship when Tiger gave Kepka a scare, shooting a final round 64. Ultimately he did finish two shots behind Kepka, as we know, and Kepka was the championship, uh the champion, but um that was like the beginning of tiger's like return to the golf scene before he eventually shocked the world and won the masters 
Um, he, he announced that he's been gearing up for this. He's been preparing for this. It's a major. He's still on the chase for Jack to catch Jack Nicholas. Um, 3,000 plus 3,000. That is hefty. I, I've already put some money on this. I might put some more. Yeah, we both did. <laughs> I think he's going to rise to the occasion. I honestly do. Um, there are a lot of golfers I like, especially around like the 50 to 1 odds mark. Gary Woodland's a guy who I expect to do well. Victor Hovland, another one. I think he's 40 to 1. But I'm going to go with Tiger. I want to see it happen. And I, I think it will happen. Yeah. Like I just said, Tom and I have both thrown on Tiger just for because that's the guy you want to root for. It's Tiger Woods. Um, before we move on, Tom, do you have one like prop esque bet you're liking for the PGA Championship? Yeah. So I'm looking at Tony Finau to finish in the top 20. It's an interesting one because he kind of struggled at FedEx, but that kind of course didn't really. Uh, suit his golf game and I feel like the PGA Championship um, at Harding Park caters more to like a bomber type strategy where Finash is going to bomb it down the fairways might be might even be able to reach some greens on par fours um, and in majors he's finished eight out of his 15 career starts he's finished in the top 20 that's over 50 percent I expect him to do so again this weekend um, yeah, I really don't think he's going to win, but I do expect somewhere in like the top, somewhere in the 10 to 15 range, I think he'll finish there. And, um, at plus 180, I think it's, it's some pretty easy money for a golfer like Tony Fina to finish top 20. Yeah, definitely not a, not a bad look. Some compelling some statistics out of Tom. Like I was saying, like it's 10 for 110 on Brooks Kepka, So you can throw on um the favorite to win and then if you place another 10 or, or another 11 10 bets and none of them hit you break it it's magic it's amazing uh i also have a prop bet i like so i i was uh looking at FanDuel again uh and one thing they're offering is the line on the winner's score uh the the line is minus 10 and a half uh, and I'm honestly thinking the winner is going to be minus 10 or worse, as in close, like it, between zero and minus 10 for all my non-familiar golf people out there. Uh, like I was mentioning, they thinned the fairways. They uh, made the rough thicker. Uh, I, I don't know what role he holds, but they interviewed someone involved with the course and he was like, yeah, this is a different beast. Uh, and I, I'm, fairly certain none if not only a few of the golfers playing this weekend have really seen it before uh this go around so uh i'm i'm gonna think that i'm gonna go with the uh groundskeeper or what a manager or whatever he was uh i'm gonna favor on the side of the beast i'm thinking minus 10 minus 9 something like that is gonna be what the winner is putting up that has minus 112 odds at the moment so yeah um i like the um or in that scenario so you're keeping minus 10 as a possibility and that's honestly i expect this uh winner score to be around minus eight to minus 10 so yeah i'm with you i think that's a good bet yeah so I, i'm digging that one the odds are not as handsome but you, not every every favorite is gonna have 1100 odds oh i love golf okay we're going to move on to something that doesn't give you 1,100 odds for picking the more likely winner. But uh, we, we stick with it nonetheless. We're going to go some basketball, some hockey, some baseball. Uh, I guess we'll just alternate real quick. I think we each have two picks we like for the next couple days. Um, some of the more distant ones, they might not have the odds out yet. I'm not really sure what you picked. I, I think one of mine doesn't have odds yet, but... Who are you liking in terms of underdogs to beat um, their, their supposedly superior opponents in the next couple days? Yeah, so I'm going to start with the trail, the red-hot trailblazers. No. Against 
the Clippers on Saturday. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to pick the Sixers game. No, I'm going to go with the Clippers game. And I I expect them to be underdogs in this, as the Clippers have a far better record. The sure. only thing that could deter that would be if the Clippers have nothing to play for. But I, they're still battling with the Nuggets in that 2-3 spot. So I think they will still be favored. Um, it's just it's going to be something to watch. I definitely could consider taking the Blazers' money line, depending where it is. But if the spread's anywhere around like five or six points, I would definitely hammer that too. Um, the Blazers have a lot to play for. They're fighting for a playoff spot. They need to remain in the nine spot or – I mean, they want to cl- they want to get into the eighth spot, but they at least need to stay in that nine spot. And they've looked great so far in the bubble. The return of Nurkic has really given this team life, and Melo's been a bit of an X factor. He's been hitting some big shots. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's got a chip on his shoulder, and um, I, I just I really want to see this Blazers team succeed. Lillard and McCollum have really got it going. They're. Uh, if one's not playing well, the other one's stepping up. It's really it's – a, it's a good team. They've got – on paper, they're one of the more talented teams in the West. And to me, they just have way more to play for than the Clippers do. Who The, the Clippers are right now in the two seed in the West. They could maybe fall to the three seed. And they just lost to Devin Booker and the Suns on a buzzer beater. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would definitely monitor the line in this game and – if the Blazers have a positive money line, which I, I think they will, I, I'm definitely going to put some money down on the Blazers. Yeah, I actually have basketball too uh, for one of mine. I'm liking the Spurs at least covering Friday night against the Jazz. I know I picked the Jazz earlier today. I'm hoping they can do away with the uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. list Grizzlies, but they are not one of the better team. I mean – on paper, they might be, but I think as far as how they play, they aren't really up there with the big dogs in the West. Um, and I think the Spurs, you can never count them out. You never want to bet against Popovich. And in the same way, I like betting with Popovich because these Spurs, they haven't been, been magnificent. They're not going to be favored in this one, but they could definitely take care of business. So, yeah, depending on how the Spurs handle the Nuggets especially, even if they don't win, if they look good, I am liking them to maybe topple the Jazz on Friday. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely an underdog I'm looking at. Yeah, and again, back to the having something to play for, the Spurs are really fighting for that last spot in the West. So, yeah, I'm liking the Spurs too um, against the Jazz this weekend. One thing, I'm not, it's just an, something else I'm going to have my eye on because there's no lines out for this either, and it, it's baseball. I'm looking at this Marlins-Mets series. Now, I, I can't really tell you who's going to be favored. There's a, a, it's a struggling Mets team against the Marlins who have been just uh, resting due to the COVID right. breakout that uh, took, place, yeah, took place within their team. Um, but I kind of like the Mets in this situation. I, I, if DeGrom's on the mound, I'd expect the Mets to be favored. So, I mean, I, I still feel like that could be a good bet unless they're like a heavy favorite, but, um, I don't, this, this week off, I don't know if it's really going to benefit the Marlins. I think they're going to come in rusty like the Phillies did against the Yankees. And I don't know. I, I don't expect them to to do away with this, this Mets team. This Mets team is better than they've been playing. They've really been struggling, but this is not a team that should be four and eight right now. Um, hopefully they can get it going this weekend. It's just something it's, it's a series I would have my eye on. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned, I don't know that I can see any sites stacking the odds against DeGrom, but I doubt the Mets will be very heavy favorites and, I'm with you. I don't know that rest is really that helpful in baseball. I don't want to uh, degrade their profession, but as far as rest goes, you get plenty of it during the game. Yeah, so I'm I'm going hockey with mine, actually, uh, keeping away from baseball. I got the 10-seed Minnesota Wild over the 7-seed Vancouver Canucks. This one's also on Friday night. Uh, it's 
It's currently a 1-1 series in that uh, NHL tournament they have going on. Uh, and they only had one less regular season point than the Canucks, the Wild did. Uh, and yet they're a 10 seed and the Canucks are a 7 seed. I think it's about as fair as a matchup as you'll find. And as far as how both teams have been playing, like I said, it's a 1-1 series. But in game two, the Canucks won 4-3. In game one, the Wild won 3-0. So they have had no issue scoring. Um, they just had more of a defensive letdown, I guess, in game two, but clearly they can do it. Um, they play tonight. Uh, so I didn't want to, I wanted a more weekend game. So people have time to listen to this and hear it. And honestly, no matter what happens tonight, even if the wild lose, so long as they don't look bad, I would have no issue betting on them Friday because back against the wall, clearly, like I said, they can win. Uh, so long as they aren't showing signs of a collapse here, I, I'm liking them this Friday as a underdog. Yeah, I think I think we've got a little common theme about um, just the will to win, and I think uh, you're right. If uh, they've got their backs against the wall, I kind of I I think that extra incentive could be a, a good factor. Yeah, I mean either way, I like them. Like I said. The, uh, they won 3-0 already. That would put them at a 2-1 lead in the series. So cl- then you think they might have their number. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to end with our uh, thing we debuted in our inaugural show. It's uh, a little bit of off-book insanity. So basically, if you're not familiar, it is all of the sports that you cannot find on any book anywhere. Uh, it, it's just we're random sports. Unfortunately. Uh, just to brief you guys on the one from two weeks ago, we bet on a redneck truck pull that they do, I don't even know where, somewhere in Georgia, where it's just two trucks trying to pull each other. They posted a video after every other one from what I could tell. So we bet on it, hoping a video would come out the next day or something. It has been two weeks and no video. <laughs> uh so someone's got to contact the rednecks someone get them to put the results up honestly i want to see what happened i want to see if one of us has to face the punishment but we'll move on we'll do something that we can guaranteed know the results of when it's over um saturday night we have the lakers and houston playing each other um and i'm gonna be honest i i don't love the stars in this, I, I've titled it the bitch bowl because you got Harden who's at the line all the time. You've got LeBron who is a world-class whiner, not to say he's not a good player, but if you want to see a player just like moan and, Oh my God, sometimes he goes a little too far. Just always talking to the ref. It's whatever. We'll move on. I don't want to go down that road. And then Davis and Westbrook, their counterparts, uh, go to the line quite often on their side of things, too. Um, the average free throws in an NBA game last year, 2018-2019, was 46. I've set the line for this one at 50. Do you think we will be seeing more or less? I think it's an easy pick. We've got, we've got the flop king in James Harden. That's a good 20 free throws. Davis gets to the line a good four, five or six times a game. That's another 12. I'm going over. I'm going <laughs> over 50. I'm saying there's going to be 58. I'm saying okay. well over. Now, we also have a punishment for this one, just like our last off-book insanity pick. Um, and probably going to be one on basically every other one to come. The penalty on this one is the loser has to stand outside shooting free throws at our local court Till they hit 10 in a row. And if it's me, we might have to reduce that, honestly, because I will be out there a good eight hours before that happens. But we'll see. I'll give it my best go, and then we'll reduce it if we have to. I'll probably get really good at it if I'm out there for that yeah, one. You'll, the practice will be worth it. Um, okay. Well, that just about does it for our show today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you are listening to this in podcast form, there is a YouTube form. If you are watching this in YouTube form, there is a podcast form. So whatever you're preferring, whatever fits, whatever you're doing, if you're going for a run, want to rock the podcast, you get the idea. That exists. 
linked on our website, which can be found in our bios on Instagram, at least, I think TikTok and Twitter too. And just a reminder, those are stratosphere sports bets uh, on all platforms. Uh, Best of luck to everyone. Definitely follow those for the daily picks and let's make some money together. Tom, do you got anything else? We're all good? Okay. Oh, wait, wait. I was asking if you had any send-off. Um, just, just thank me. Prepare to thank me at Tommy M. Griffin <laughs> um, after Tiger wins you a boatload of money. That's okay. all I'm I, I, Hey, I'm pulling for him, too. Uh, all right, everyone. Have a good one. Yeah.